أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله تبارك وتعالى وسلم على سيدنا محمد سيدنا وسندنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذرياته وأهل بيته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد الحمد لله it's by the fadl of Allah Ta'ala and by His grace and by His mercy that we've reached this Mubarak last Friday of Ramadan, that we've reached this Mubarak month of Ramadan, that we've reached these Mubarak last 10 nights of Ramadan. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us from that which He gives those He loves. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to do within these days those things that we need in order to take provision for our journey to the hereafter. One of the worst things a person can say is, oh, look how fast Ramadan went by. You didn't even notice. If you're doing in this time those things that you should be doing, those things that you need to be doing, the time, I assure you, will not go by quickly. Rather, the time will have barakah in it. If you are spending the time the way you should be spending it, by the time you get to the end of the day, you will barely be able to remember the thing that you did in the beginning of the day. This is how barakah works. The problem is what? The problem is twofold. One is a universal problem and one is somewhat of a peculiar problem to the people in the time and age that we live in. The universal problem is that human beings have an extraordinary ability to waste time. An extraordinary ability to procrastinate, to put off those things that they need to do that are there for their benefit. This is something you have to fight inside of yourself, I have to fight inside of myself. There is no amount of ilm that's going to be able to cast this thing away. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's no madrasa you can go to that will fix this. You cannot become a sheikh or maulana or a peer or murshid or get khilafah from someone that's going to fix this. You cannot become a mufti in order to fix this. You have to fight this fight on your own. Someone else can do a lot for you. Someone else can pay your rent. Somebody else can pay your bills. Somebody can help you with your chores. Somebody can give you company when you feel alone. Other people can do a lot of things. This is one of those few things no one else can do on your behalf. You have to do it for yourself. I have to do it for myself. Part of our extraordinary ability to waste time comes from inside. Part of it also comes from the company that we keep. So for the sake of the Lord, I beg all of you, humbly, no iftar parties, no suhoor parties, no more wasting time with people. Are you saying, Sheikh, that I should no longer meet my relatives? Yes, for a couple of days, it's okay if you don't meet like your extended family. Your cousins, mothers, cousins, dogs, neighbors, pupas, wives, veterinarians, new brother-in-law. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. If you say no to somebody, you will be okay. Oftentimes, because of the nature of social connections that we have in the various different communities that we come from, people will try to put a lot of pressure on you. And they'll try to put a lot of leverage on you in order to come to their party or their whatever event, gathering, whatever it may be. Religious people are extremely gullible, naive, extremely stupid when it comes to this type of leverage and this type of pressure. If you want to know why I say that religious people are oftentimes very stupid when it comes to this type of pressure, your deen is important to you, isn't it? Isn't it? Otherwise, why else would you be here on a Friday? Your deen is important to you, but for people who have no care and no concern for your deen, you're willing to throw it away for them? If you want to know how silly it looks to those people 
Then ask them to sacrifice some part of their dunya, a day that they're supposed to make a lot of money or a day that's very important for them for work or for school or for some other dunya-related event or function for them and see how that person will change from a human being into a snake, will change from a human being into a rabid dog and strike back at you because what? You threatened the thing that was important for them. So I'm not saying you should become like that. I'm just telling you everybody has something that's important for them. If this deen is important for you, you guard it. Tell them, look, I'm sorry. I know that you're not you know, excited that I'm not going to come to your iftar party or whatever. But look, Eid is just in a couple of days. Inshallah, I'll come visit you on Eid. I'll come visit you the day after Eid. I'll come visit you on the weekend. I'll make up for it with you. And if the person still doesn't want to accept it, what are you going to do at some point or another? Even the Quran commands us to say to people, Lakum deenukum waliyadeen. There are just a few days left. This is the only Friday. Sit, send Salat and Salam on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Read your Surah Al-Kahf. Do those things that you should be doing, that you know that you should be doing. And load up on that benefit that you cannot find in other parts of the year and other times of the year. The first remarkable ability that we have to destroy all of this is our own internal ability to waste time. This is something universal to all human beings. The second problem we have is what? Is that the alat, the instruments of distraction that we have, are unprecedented. It's very interesting. I grew up getting yelled at by my parents not to watch TV and watch movies and play video games. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our elders. It's very interesting. We grew up getting yelled at by them not to waste our time with those things. Go study, go pray, go work out, go clean your room, go do something useful. Now I've seen what that the situation has turned on its head. Why? Because the media was produced for us who grew up speaking English. There was not all that much media for people who spoke Urdu or Punjabi or Persian or Arabic or other vernacular languages of different places. Now, mashallah, there are 30 channels pumping out garbage 24-7 about politics, about political candidates, about this thing, about that thing. Half of the stuff is made up. God knows if any of it is true or not. And we see now as younger people, our elders are glued and addicted to these things. For the sake of the Lord, just put it down. Put it away, shut your phone off, put it in a bag. Do what you need to. If you need to smash the phone with a hammer, go ahead and do it. Except for wasting mal is haram in Islam. But if that was the last thing that you need to, to do in order to take benefit from these days, do it in order to take benefit from these days. I plead with you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us are going to enter into our graves one day. Nobody is going to say, I wish I had gone on... YouTube and saw one more story about my favorite political candidate or one more, you know, TV show or one more whatever, consumed one more piece of whatever consumable garbage that's out there. You're not supposed to be watching those things anyway during Ramadan. Please, for the sake of the Lord, don't allow yourself to be enchanted from those things. Put them away and see a better vision for these couple of days. Ayyamun ma'dudat, they're just a couple of days. And even amongst those couple of days, we're now at the end. Tonight is the night of the 26th. So you have six, seven, eight, nine. There's a very good chance. There's a very good possibility, a preponderant possibility that the moon will be seen on the 29th. And that's it. You don't know if you'll see another Ramadan after this again or not. What should you be doing in these last 10 nights? One of the reasons that it's a sunnah for the men to make i'tikaf in the masajid in these last 10 nights, is that in them is to be found the Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr. MashaAllah, everybody remembers that from their days in Maktab, from their childhood days of memorizing the surah, surahs of Juz Amma. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum about those people who came from before us, in the ummas before us, that would go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, jihad fi sabilillah, and pray by night, fast by day, pray by night, would rack up huge accounts of good deeds, 80 years straight, continuously in the 
obedience of the Lord and the worship of the Lord. Now, if you say this nowadays to somebody in America, they'll say, this is extremism, brother. Don't you know Islam means moderation? You don't understand what moderation means. This is not how the companions of the Allah Ta'ala and whom reacted to that. What did they react to that with? They said their eyes were open, their hearts were open and bloom. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we wish we could do something like that. Abu look, I'm not telling you you have to read namaz for 80 years. But it's okay to like think that it's a good thing. That's free. That doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to make i'tikaf in order to love i'tikaf. You don't have to go to taraweeh in order to love taraweeh. You don't have to go on jihad in order to uh, love jihad for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love of these things is in fact a deed that is separate from the actual action itself. On the Day of Judgment, many people will find that the love of these things is actually the superior part of the reward for them. So the companions of the Allah who loved this when they heard it. And they expressed their sorrow that they would, were not able to be like that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-kareem. Whoever asks him, akramul akrameen, the most generous of the generous, whoever asks Allah ta'ala gives. So this is part, not all, but part of the occasion and the reason and circumstances in which it was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to the nature of this Laylatul Qadr. So it comes in the athar that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in these nights used to wake his family up. That he used to wake his family up. Your wives, your children, it's not just that you should cold wake them up and say, don't you know, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr? No, facilitate it for them. Make it easy for them. Motivate them. Buy them the things that make them happy. Make them the promises that after this we'll do this and we'll do that. Motivate not just the children, motivate your wife as well. I would say to the ladies to motivate the husbands, but if I had to say that in front of you, this would be against the shan of manhood. But some of the more intelligent women that are stuck with some of the less intelligent men, they know how to do this as well. If this is what you need to do, then go ahead and do it. Wake up your family in these nights. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's narrated about him that Jeddah, he became serious in these nights. Not everything is happy, not everything is a joke. Those people who know me, mashallah, you know I joke a lot actually, perhaps a little bit too much. But even my children, I have to tell them, look, you know, Baba likes to like laugh and say funny things, but not everything in life is a joke. Be serious about these nights. Be serious about these days. Be serious about these moments. وَشَدَّ الْمِئْزَرْ Some of the muhaddithin, some of the shurah of the hadith, they say that this is a, a metaphor for, for abstinence from sexual relations. That the Prophet ﷺ tightened his lower garment. It's also quite possible that the meaning of this is what is for a person to gather their courage. You see that even like weightlifters, when they lift a whole bunch of weight, they, they, they tighten a weight belt. The point is, is what? You become serious and you ready yourself in order to what? In order to work, in order to do something. So don't eat those things that you're accustomed to eating. MashaAllah, many people from communities similar to the ones that I come from, we have horrible diets, but the point of this Juma Bayan is not to talk about nutrition. So just whatever you're eating, just eat less of it. Like a lot less. If you don't eat something for one night, if I don't eat something for one night, you're not going to die, I'm not going to die. If you're going to die, then don't do this. This advice is not for you, but the rest of us, we're not going to die. If one night we should eat a little bit less. Why? Because it's going to make you sleepy. It's going to make you groggy. It's going to make you lethargic. Let it go for a night. Be serious about this night. This is one of those nights. If you get what you want in this night, then you will eat and drink for a hundred and a thousand and a million years afterward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will feed you something good in this world and in the hereafter, inshallah. Look for this Laylatul Qadr in every night and make sure that you have your portfolio diversified enough that there is enough of an investment in each one of these nights that if any of them was to be that night, that you have something that will take you to your destination on the Day of Judgment. 
be careful and be wary of those circumstances, those states, and those people that are going to set you off. Because one of the reasons that Laylatul Qadr is taken away from people and snatched away from people is what? Because of their anger and their fighting and bickering with one another. I myself am a person who is guilty of being contentious at times. So pull yourself out of those situations that are going to aggravate you and that are going to give you difficulty. This is an important skill the deen teaches us, it forces us to learn the skill as well. Same thing, anyone who has gone on hajj before, you know about that la rafatha wa la fasuqa wa la jidala fil hajj. People will go on hajj and say, oh shaykh, this needs to be this way, this needs to be that way. Oh, blah, blah. I'm like, let it go, just do your hajj. No, but how will things get better? I go, look, if you really care about Hajj that much, you care about Makkah Bukharama and Medina Munawara that much that you want to make it better, finish your Hajj, go home, and then come get another visa, come again, and then fix all of these problems. If you want to give nasiha. It's not only Hajj. This is a skill Hajj teaches you. This is a skill Umrah, at least in theory, should teach you. Why? Because it allows you to let go of smaller problems in order to deal with bigger ones. It allows you to let go of smaller benefits in order to get bigger ones. These nights are nights like that. If you understand what I'm talking about, then pretend in these nights like you're on Hajj, like you're on Umrah. Circumnavigate problems, let things go. You can deal with it after Eid, inshallah. I'm not even telling you to let it go completely. Some things need to be dealt with if a person leaves certain problems to rot gets out of hand, deal with them after Eid. These nights are not the time to deal with them. Your zakat al-fitr, you have to also pay. And I will tell you something, I will remind you, and I will remind myself of something with regards to zakat al-fitr. That zakat al-fitr, according to a great number of the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and according to Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik, amongst other Imams, is wajib. It is an obligation. The obligation was explained as being twofold. There's an inner reality and an outer reality. The outer reality is what? Is that we as Muslims, if it's not Eid for the poor amongst us, then it's not Eid for any of us. There's no Eid for some people and not Eid for the others. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَنَأَرْوِي بِالْمَعْنَىٰ أَغْنُوهُمْ عَنْ ذُلِّ السُّؤَالِ أَغْنُوهُمْ فِي هَذَا الْيَوْمِ He says, give the poor amongst you enough freedom for need that they don't have to humiliate themselves on this day by asking and begging other people in order for this Eid to be for them as well. The primary understanding should be amongst us that if there's a poor person who's struggling with their rent, struggling with their bills, you give them money so they don't have to struggle on this day. They can come with a free mind and free, free, clear conscience. This is another issue that is peculiar to our community as immigrants in this country, which is we came with nothing and we had to go through all sorts of difficulty and all sorts of cruel and horrible circumstances. Therefore, we expect that everybody else ha should have to suffer horribly and cruelly like we did. This is not good. This is a sign of a heart that's mahroom, that's deprived of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is not a good thing. If you suffered, don't turn around to the next person and say, you should suffer because I suffered. Rather, if you suffered, remember what it felt like to suffer and turn around to the next person and try to alleviate their suffering. This is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And I mention that particularly, why? Because the books of fiqh, say that the haq, the first haq goes to those people who are around us. It goes in four categories. The right to take the money of zakat and zakat al-fitr is what? Those people are close to us in physical proximity. Those people are close to us in relation. Those people whose need is severe and those people who are virtuous as opposed to those people who are ignorant or heedless of their obligations to Allah Ta'ala and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So don't be cruel to one another. At some point, if you say you're a Muslim and you believe in it, then practice it. If you know someone is struggling in your own community, then don't say, oh, this is Canada, everybody's rich here. Everybody isn't rich here. There are people who go through difficulty. Or what, do you want to wait till someone is starving to death before you have sympathy for them? This is a state of, this is the state of being mahroom, of being 
deprived of the mercy and the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of being deprived of all good things that the heart needs in order to survive. So the best thing you can do for zakat al is look for those people, think about those people, ask about those people, and give them the money yourself. The zakat al is not considered to be rendered by putting it in the masjid box. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not fulfilled by putting it in the masjid box. It's only fulfilled when it comes to the hand of the person who deserves it. The fuqara and masakin. Now, the masjid may deliver it and distribute it properly. I haven't audited their, their methods, but I have a good opinion of every Muslim. But if you think you're going to show up on the, the, the Eid al-Adha and put the money in the box and say, look, I've put zakat al-fitr, I've given zakat al-fitr, a general donation to the masjid doesn't fulfill it. It has to reach the hand of the poor person in order for it to be fulfilled. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa it's narrated by Sayyidina, I believe, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhum, not directly from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but about the sunnah of zakat al-fitr, that whoever gives it before thee, the, the, the Eid prayer, that person for them is a zakat which is accepted by Allah Ta'ala and whoever gives it afterward, it's just any sort of sadaqah that any person gives on any day of the year. So the outward reality and signification of zakat al-fitr is what? Is to enrich the poor amongst us so that they can celebrate Eid with us as well. This is part of the cruelty of the society that we live in, that they've criminalized the poor people begging. Whereas in the home countries, yes, there's poverty, but also people are, feel free to ask when they have a need and people feel free to give when they have something to give. There are definitely issues back home, but there is a part of it that's beautiful as well that we should also respect. What's the inward reality of the zakat al-fitr? It is a purification for the one who fasted from all of the vanity that they had in their fast from all of the indecency that they had in their fast. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna allaha tayyibun la yaqbilu illa tayyib. Allah ta'ala is pure and he does not accept anything other than that which is pure. Now, who here is the great wali of Allah ta'ala that can stand up in front of all of Jami Abu Bakr Scarborough and tell us that your fast was completely pure of any sort of indecency? and any sort of vanity. The fast of the, the, the mouth is what? Is that you don't eat or drink. The fast of the private parts is that you don't have sexual relations. This part, many of us are able to get through, alhamdulillah. The fast of the eyes is to not look at haram. The fast of the ears is not to hear the haram. Who here was able to do that for the entire month? The fast of the heart is to not think of anyone except for Allah Ta'ala. If a person can fast like that for more than five seconds, please make dua for me. I consider you really to be a great wali of Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa showed us a way. Look, Allah ta'ala is pure. He doesn't accept anything other than that which is pure. Here's a way that you can fix up the part of your fast which is not acceptable so that the entire thing can be presented to Allah ta'ala on, on the day of Eid. And it's still acceptable. He had, it gave us a way to fix it. $10, $15, $25, I don't know how much the local ulama said it in this locality, but I promise you, for whatever, $15, $20, this reward that you get, this benefit that you get, it's 100% worth it. It's 100% worth it. And the last couple of minutes I have, I wanted to talk about now the day of Eid. The significance of the day of Eid is what? It's the day that your Ramadan, your fasting, your taraweeh, your prayers, your zakat, sadaqah, all of your recitation of the Quran, all of your good deeds are bundled up. And we as the ummah, we bundle them up. That's why we have such huge gatherings for Eid. And we all put them together in one place in the hope that what? Out of all of this gathering, if Allah Ta'ala accepts from even one of us, that he'll accept from all of us. So bring a good offering on that day and gather many people with good offerings on that day and make your toba before you go to that place. Remember, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى That the person has been felicitous, has been successful, who gives the zakat al-fitr 
and then takes the name of his Lord and prays, comes to the musalla saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd, and then says that Eid prayer. Why? Because what's the reward of Allah Ta'ala accepting on that day? It comes in the athar that on the day of Eid, Allah Ta'ala boasts in front of his angels, says, look, look, oh my angels, my servants, they, I made something, an obligation on them, they fulfilled the obligation. And now they wake up early in the morning, they throng the streets, and they call upon me, and they make dua to me, and they praise me. And I swear an oath, and Allah Ta'ala swears an oath by his asma husna and sifat ula, that I've accepted from them, and I've rewarded them for the good deeds that they've done, and in place of every one of their sins, I've written a good deed. Then you have an Eid Mubarak, even if you didn't get a new kurta made. Even if you, your children don't have fancy clothes, even if there's nobody to give you ED, it's still an Eid Mubarak. Everybody leaves that gathering with the feeling of this clean, cleanness inside, with the feeling of this effluence of divine grace having washed a person. If you come empty handed, however, the Qanun is there by the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Man wajada sa'atan li an yudahiyya. The person who has the ability to give the sacrifice on the day of Adha. They had the ability, they had the money, they had the wherewithal to do it, but they didn't sacrifice. What's the point of them coming to the Eid prayer anyway? This is not just about Eid al-Adha. This is a rule. The same rule applies to this Eid al-Fitr. That if you want to waste these nights, you want to waste these days, and then you're going to come on the... David Eid empty handed. You can go, you can get nice clothes made, you can eat big food, you can say Eid Mubarak and hug a thousand strangers. It's not, there's, what is it there for you? You're just an actor. It's like closer to Halloween than it is to Eid al Fitr. However, the person who keeps vision and holds that vision tight in just these couple of days six, seven, eight, nine, and then what? Eid. Just these couple of days that we have left. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us. May Allah ta'ala accept it from you. May Allah ta'ala use it as a means to change the hal, the situation, the condition of the ummah of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, zahiran wa batina. May Allah ta'ala use it as a, a means for the facilitation of his help and his aid. We live in a time that we see little children being killed on social media day in and day out minute by minute, hour by hour. It's a pathetic situation we're in. If this is not enough to wake us up to the importance of this, of this Eid, of this acceptance on this Eid, Allah knows best what is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala rasulihi sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillahi al-Rahim al-Barr akramana fi Ramadan bil layali al-Ashr wa ja'ala fiha laylatan hiya khayrun min alf shah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين أما بعد فأوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله ربكم واستثمار أيامكم واغتنام أوقات النفحات ومواسم العبادات فهنيئا لمن أدرك فرصة الطاعة قبل فواتها وارتقى مدارج التقوى في بانها وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى واتقون يا أولي الألباب فيا أولي الألباب ها هو رمضان قد آذن بالرحيل ولم يبق منه إلا القليل من رأى أكثره وبقي أخيره فنسأل الله الواهب المنان أن يكرمنا في ختامه بعفو منه وغفران وأن يجود علينا بالرحمة والرضوان ويرزقنا استثمار ما تبقى من أيامه الكريمة ولياليه العظيمة بأن نحسن وداعها بالطاعات والقربات ونستودع في خزائنها عمل الصالحات ويوفقنا لإدراك ليلة القدر وما أدراكم ما ليلة القدر إنها جوهرة الشهر المصونة ودرته المكنونة 
أظمها الله تعالى في كتابه أيما تعظيم وكرمها أيما تكريم قال الله عز وجل إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر إلى آخر السورة فيا سعادة من أحياها بالعبادة إن له ثواب من عبد ثلاثا وثمانين سنة وزيادة روى الإمام مالك رحمه الله تعالى أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أري أعمار الناس قبله فكأنه تقاصر أعمار أمتي أن لا يبلغ من العمل مثل الذي بلغ غيرهم فأعطاه الله ليلة القدر هي خير من ألف شهر إنهم قاموها إيمانا وإحتسابا غفر لهم ما تقدم من البذر فيها تتنزل الملائكة الكرام وفود الرحمن من السدرة العليا من كل سماء أعدادهم وفيرة وخيراتهم كثيرة وبركاتهم غزيرة قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يتقدمهم جبريل أمين يدعون للمؤمنين ويحفون الذاكرين ويؤمنون على دعاء القانتين ويسلمون على الطائعين فيحل السلم والسلام والخير للألام فاللهم وفقنا لإدراك هذه الليلة المباركة وهب لنا من نفحاتها الخير والبركة وتقبل منا الصيام والقيام وتلاوة القرآن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين يا من ترجون من الله الأجر وترغبون في إدراك فضل ليلة القدر أشكر الله تعالى على أن بلغكم هذه الأيام المباركات واجتهدوا في عمارها كلها بالطاعات فقد كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يجتهد في العشر الأواخر ما لا يجتهد في غيرها يتحرى ليلة القدر ليدرك فضلها وينال ثوابها فلنقتد بهديه ولنسر على نهجه من كان منا محسنا فليزد في الإحسان ومن كان مقصرا فليستدرك قبل فؤات الأوان استثمروا كل لحظة في أنواع الطاعات وصنوف العبادات اذكروا الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبكم اجتهدوا في إكمال ختماتكم تحروا أوقات الإجابة بدعواتكم لنفسكم ولأهلكم وأولادكم فرب دعوة صادقة تحقق بها الغايات وتنزل بها الرحمات صنوا أرحامكم وزوروا أصدقاءكم واتركوا كل خصومة واجتنبوا كل قطيعة من كان بينه وبين أخيه خصام فليبادره بالسلام حتى ترفع أعمالهما وتخبل طاعتهما وأحسنوا الظن بربكم واستبشروا بقبول أعمالكم فقد ازمعتم نهاركم وقمتم ليلكم وتقربتم إلى خالقكم وهو الكريم الشكور العزيز الغفور وتوجوا طاعاتكم بإخراج زكاة أموالكم وزكاة أنعامكم وبادروا بزكاة فطركم قبل صلاة عيدكم فإنها طهرة من اللقب والرفث للصائمين وطعمة للمساكين فأخرجوا طيبة بها نفوسكم لتنشر السرور في مجتمعكم ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله
الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون هذا وصلوا وسلموا على نبيكم صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ورضي عن الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين وعن سائر الصحابة الأكرمين اللهم إنا ندعوك بخير ما دعيت به في ليلة القدر فنتوجه إليك قائلين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اجعلنا ممن صام وقام ونال رضاك يا كريم اللهم اختم لنا رمضان برضوانك والإتق من نيرانك اللهم اجعلنا ممن وفق لليلة القدر فظفر بعظيم الأجر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار اللهم ارحم المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون أقيموا الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى
سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان سبحان ربي الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سبحان 
سبحان ربي سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر تحية السلام عليكم أشهد أن لا إله إلا اللهم إني سلام ورحمة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوخاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخذنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى واجعل آخرتنا خيرا من الأولى اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعفو أنا يا كريم اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار يا فاطر السماوات والأرض أنت ولينا في الدنيا والآخرة توفنا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا نداما ولا مفتونين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحم الرحيم